We've talked about Zinc here a couple of updates ago, but the story is not done. It's kind of an exciting story that gives me some cautious optimism in terms of COVID-19. But to understand this better, we've got to go back and look at the molecular biology of the cell once again. Here is the nucleus of the cell. In the nucleus of the cell is the DNA. The DNA is a double-stranded string of nucleotides, which are the codes. Those codes are transcribed using RNA polymerase into RNA. That RNA then goes out of the nucleus, gets a five prime cap, and gets a three prime poly A tail, and it's ready for ribosomes to come on to read that code. And that code is then translated into the code of amino acids, which amino acid after amino acid will turn into a polypeptide, which turns into a protein. And proteins are how the cell gets things done. So it moves by proteins, actin and myosin. It can bind oxygen through hemoglobin. It can do cellular metabolism. All of those enzymes in glycolysis, in the citric acid cycle, all those things that you learned in biochemistry, those are all enzymes, those are all proteins. So that's the normal situation. Now enter coronavirus. Coronavirus has its own genome. It is made out of RNA. And that RNA just happens to have a five prime head and a poly A tail. So when it pops into the cytosol, it's going to be read by those same ribosomes that can't tell the difference. Except this time, instead of making a protein that's useful to your cell, this RNA that comes out of the virus is going to make something called a RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. And it's this enzyme right here that is going to read from the 3 prime end to the 5 prime end of the viral RNA and replicate it. So this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase makes more viral genomes. It's also known as replicase for that reason. And there's something that has been shown to inhibit this replicase, and that is zinc. Zinc will shut down RNA-dependent RNA polymerase or replicase. And so that is what we learned. The problem is, how do you get zinc inside the cell? The problem with zinc is that it's an ion. It's a two plus ion. And ions cannot get through the cellular membrane unless there's a transporter that allows it to come in. In fact, the way that they tested this in the paper is with an ionophore, which allows the zinc to come into the cell so they could see that the activity of this RNA-dependent RNA polymerase was reduced. This is the paper. Zinc inhibits coronavirus RNA polymerase activity in vitro, and zinc ionophores block the replication of these viruses in cell culture. When they looked at the SARS-CoV virus, that was the one that was seen back in 2002, as the zinc concentration inside the cell went up, you can see that the byproduct of the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase went down, down, down clearly demonstrating that zinc intracellularly is going to block this very important enzyme of the virus. Well, that's great. We've got zinc that's going to block it, but how are we going to get zinc inside the cell? It's one thing to say that you're going to take zinc supplements, but how do those zinc supplements, first of all, get absorbed into your body, into the blood? into the extracellular space, and then finally, how are you going to get that zinc from the extracellular space into the intracellular space in the cytosol where it needs to work on these infected cells and these viral proteins? Well, that's another thing altogether. What you need is some sort of ionophore or some sort of gated mechanism to open and to allow that zinc to come into the cell increasing the concentration of zinc into the cell so it can block RDRP. Well, enter this paper that was pointed out by some of you commenting. Chloroquine is a zinc ionophore. This paper was published back in 2014, and the point of this paper was something completely different. They weren't thinking about coronavirus. They probably didn't even know, perhaps, that zinc blocked RNA-dependent RNA polymerase. 
What they were looking at here is that zinc may help some of these cancer cells basically eat themselves in the lysosomes, which are sort of the trash compactors of the cell, and that by giving chloroquine, you could have these cancer cells disappear. Well, in doing that research, they found out something that's very interesting to us because of that finding. And this research came out of the University of Oklahoma and some institutions in China. So this is what they used, chloroquine diphosphate. Here's the structure of that compound. And this chloroquine is a medication that has been around for decades that is used to treat malaria. It's not under patent and it's pretty dirt cheap and widely available. However, you do need a prescription to use this, and it doesn't come without side effects. What they show is that they were able to detect intracellular zinc by checking its fluorescence. Here on the x-axis, we have increasing concentrations of chloroquine, and the white bars represents those cells that were bathed in only 5 micromolar solution of zinc chloride, and the black was in 10 times that amount at 50 micromolars concentration of zinc chloride. And what you can see here is that in the normal situation, if you're able to get some zinc into the cells, this is the amount of zinc you will see inside the cells. So this is the amount of concentration. And in the discussion, we've got the conclusion of the matter. The conclusion that chloroquine is a zinc ionophore is based on the detection of significantly elevated intracellular zinc levels when both zinc and chloroquine were added to the cell culture medium. So the question is, is this being used? And to that, I turn to Korea Biomedical Review. Physicians work out treatment guidelines for coronavirus. Notice that this is published here on the 13th of February when they were starting to see an uptick in their cases in Korea. And the article goes on to say, Korean physicians treating the patients infected with the new coronavirus, COVID-19, have established the treatment guidelines for the unpreceded coronavirus. The key guidelines are the following. If patients are young and healthy, then they will be observed. If more than 10 days have passed since the onset of the illness, they'll continue to watch them. But notice what happens if the patients are old, have underlying conditions, or sick and have symptoms. They say here for antiviral treatment, the doctors recommend lopinavir and ritonavir. This is basically the medication Kaletra, which is an HIV medication. And they recommend two tablets twice a day. Or they can use chloroquine, 500 milligrams per day orally. In Korea, chloroquine is not available, so they use a very close relative of chloroquine, which is hydroxychloroquine, and that's at 400 milligrams orally per day. Now, the reason why you would not want to use both is because they interact with each other in a negative way in terms of prolonging the QT interval. For those of you who don't know what the QT interval is, this is a measurement of electrical conduction in the myocardium, in the heart, and if the QT becomes too prolonged, you can get fatal cardiac arrhythmias. In this article, they do talk about the antiviral treatment lasting about 7 to 10 days, but it could be shortened or extended. And here is one of the keys that I want to mention. This is all being used empirically. We don't have randomized controlled trials looking at chloroquine in patients with COVID-19. That being said, there has been some publications, interestingly, coming out of China, which do tout the efficacy of chloroquine. Now, I have to say at this point that it's a little bit interesting that that's happening from my standpoint and from the standpoint of somebody who understands what a randomized controlled trial that's blinded says. Because if you are truly doing a blinded study, you will not be able to tell if an intervention is working or not. That's the whole point of a blinded study, and that is to avoid bias. For instance, if you know that someone's getting the intervening choice, you might be doing a better job of taking care of that patient without even knowing it. Now, that is all to say, if we look at South Korea numbers, and of course, we know that they have extensively tested, and this is my hypothesis, if you extensively go out and try to find as many cases as you possibly can, and then you set up a standardized treatment regimen and get people on that regimen early, 
you can see here that even though Italy and South Korea have very similar total cases, the number of deaths is an order of magnitude different. The number of serious and critical is more than an order of magnitude different between them. And one has to wonder, either the tip of the iceberg is much, much smaller on a very, very large iceberg in terms of Italy, or there is some sort of systematic treatment difference between what is going on in Italy and what is going on in South Korea. We'll end on this, where they talk about the trials of coronavirus. Data from the drug study showed certain curative effect with fairly good efficacy. Chinese National Center for Biotechnology Development Deputy Head Sun Yenrong said that chloroquine, an anti-malarial medication, was selected after several screening rounds of thousands of existing drugs. According to Sun, patients treated with chloroquine demonstrated a better drop in fever, improvement of lung CT images, and required a shorter time to recover compared to parallel groups. The percentage of patients with negative viral nucleic acid tests was also higher with the anti-malarial drug. Chloroquine has so far showed no obvious serious adverse reactions in more than 100 participants in the trials. Όπως διαπιστώνουμε από την ιστοσελίδα του Γαλλινού, όπου αναφέρονται όλα τα σκευάσματα, φάρμακα, τα οποία έχουν έγκριση κυκλοφορία στην Ελλάδα, η χλωροκίνη έχει έγκριση, δεν υπάρχει αυτή τη στιγμή η διάθεσή της, όμως η έγκρισή της έχει δοθεί στο Ινστιτούτο Φαρμακευτικής Έρευνας και Τεχνολογίας, το οποίο είναι δημόσιο οργανισμός και εφόσον κρυθεί από τους Έλληνες γιατρούς και επιστήμονες, ίσως θα έπρεπε να δοθεί εντολή για την παραγωγή αυτού του φαρμάκου από το Ινστιτούτο για να αντιμετωπιστεί το πρόβλημα που έχει η Ελλάδα αυτή τη στιγμή με τον κορονοϊό. Σας ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ που δεν χρόνο για να παρακολουθήσετε αυτό το βίντεο.